and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at a variant Sudoku that was sent to us recently on Twitter by a user called IHNN and he was forwarding on an email from a Chinese address which has the handle at T-O-N-S-C-R. So I don't know who those people are but T-O-N-S-C-R has posted this very interesting um, looking puzzle, which, as I say, is a deficit region Sudoku. Now, what that means, I believe, is that you don't have the normal three by three boxes. Instead, there are, in this case, five regions, and those regions must each contain the numbers from one to nine. Now, that's quite useful for the three ordinary 3x3 three three boxes in the grid, but much less useful for the other enormous 27-cell regions, which obviously have to contain all the numbers from 1 to 9. I mean, you can see that the 6 that aren't those 3 can only overlap the 6 that aren't those 3 by 3, so all 9 must be used. So... That's a fairly useless constraint, except for the three 3x3 three three boxes. Now, what does remain the same, as with a standard Sudoku, is that each row and column must contain the numbers 1 to 9. So, let's hope we can use that information um, and crack this. Now, the oddity here, I think, in a way, is that there are fewer givens than in a regular Sudoku, and yet there is fewer help in terms of regions. So that's quite peculiar. I mean, I also notice that there's only 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 6, and no 4s at all provided. I have a feeling this is going to be a very difficult challenge, but let's have a look. Um, so we can start with these two 2s here. Now, they rule out 2s from 6 of the cells in the central box. So we can put a two in the other one. Um, that's useful. I'm not sure. Oh yes, sevens as well. That seven, that seven, and that seven all operate on this box so that we can fill in a seven there. I suspect there's not going to be all that many other immediate numbers we can put in this group, but there are quite a few sevens, aren't there? So where does... A 7 go in this box? Uh, well, again, actually, we do have three very useful 7s placed, so we can put a 7 in there. And now, where else do 7s go? Here, there must be one in one of those two. Now, I'm going to, be have to, I'm going to have to be very careful with the notation. Normally, I'd use Snyder notation, which marks where numbers must be within a region, but that won't really work in these two big regions. So I might be using slightly different. So I could use here, for instance, seven must be placed in one of those two cells, but we don't necessarily know which one yet. Um, and where's the seven in column six? It's either, in fact, it must be here, mustn't it? Seven is ruled out by, the, by the, these sevens that we have placed, seven is ruled out of every space in column six except that one. So that actually resolves these sevens. And I think we must therefore have all the sevens placed in the grid now. So that's something. And that one's helpful in another way because of these two fives. Where does the five go in this region? Got to be there. Um... But is there much else that we can conclude? <clears throat> wow, there really isn't a lot else going on, I don't think. So let's try filling in some, uh, some restrictions. So two and two there, one of these must be a two. Six there, one of these three must be a six. Um, in this box down here. Threes must be there. Fives must be in one of those. What else have we got? Um, wow, I mean, this is, there's so little information going on. And you have to be very careful with these because some of the normal 
expectations for things that you can presume just aren't good. Like you see a six there, and I kind of assume you can't have a six in these two cells, but you certainly can. Right, the, having placed a two in one of those cells, that means this can't be a two. These two can't be twos as well because of the other twos in their rows. So two in column nine must be in the bottom box in one of those two places. Um, ah, yes, by, by the same process of elimination, we've got a five in one of these three, and that stops there being a five here. In this column, fives are also blocked from all of those cells. So in fact, there has to be a five here. And that is quite interesting. Now, imagine there was a two in this cell. Where would five be in this final column? It would have to be here. That would be a five. And that is interesting because we need to get two fives in both column four and column five. And with a five here, fives are ruled out. Remember, these are a five, they include a five. So fives would be then be ruled out of all of those cells, that one, that one by the five in column nine and those. We'd have to put two fives both in the same box. And that's not possible. So by that process of elimination, this cannot be a two. And indeed, that must be the two in column nine. Crikey. I mean, that's complex. In fact, what that means about fives is very interesting. Anything that stops this cell being a five is impossible. Because again, these can't be a five those can't be a five, that can't be a five. There can only be one five in the central box. So the other five in columns four or five has to be here. So we can put in a five there. Oh, it looks so strange, a grid with all these twos and fives and sevens next to each other in, in the same region, but that is the rules this time. So we've got a five there, five there, okay. We don't really know Oh, well, interestingly, the last two fives that we haven't indicated at all must be in those five cells, I think, because these are all ruled out by the fives in their rows. So we need to place three fives in these cells. And that's quite good because only one of them is in column nine. So the five in column nine must be there. Um, that can't be a five because that's a box. So we're going to put two fives in those cells. I don't really know how to indicate that in notation, so I might just try and remember it, to be honest. Where does the five go in this row, though? Well, not in the first four cells. They're all ruled out by vertical fives. So one of the fives is in there, and one of them's in there, and that's what I'm going to struggle to notate, so I probably won't for now. But it might be worth remembering that when we come back to look at fives later. Now, how does that help us? Hmm, this principle of fitting two things in might be interesting elsewhere. But I'm not quite sure how to use that yet. These must be 9, 4, and 6, but I think those are numbers that have virtually no restrictions on them anywhere, so I'm not sure it's going to help me to notate that particularly at the moment. Oh, look at this. This has been available for a while. Two threes there helpfully mean the only three in the central box has to be there. That's good, I think. Although, yeah, that's ruled out all of these from being threes. Hmm, not sure if that necessarily helps us. Three, seven, one, eight, five, six, six, I don't know. 
Now, what else could we pick up? Where does it... Oh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of twos in, and they're ruling out a lot of positions in the bottom row. Remember, this two rules out both of those positions. Those are all ruled out by the twos above them. The two on the bottom row must be there. That's nice. Um, the one on the bottom row must be in one of these two cells. Um, seven, two, six, two. Is that too more helpful? No, not really. We've got one, two up here. One of these, I think, must be a two. Oh no, it could be there, in fact. One of those five cells is a two. Um, yeah, that's interesting. What else could we possibly find? If one is there or there. No, can't see. Can't see quite what to do next. Where does one go in this row? Row seven. Not here because of the one in the box. Not here, not here. So one must be either there or there. Um, one at the top by a fairly similar process of elimination has to be either there or here. Again, that one, that one, and that one rule out all the other possibilities. Um, and one in this row. Well, there's four possibilities for that. I can't really distinguish between. Ah, but in the columns, one here must be in one of those three. This one in one of those three. So actually, here's the key point, I think. Where does a two go in row eight? Can't go here because of that one. These four are all ruled out by twos in their same columns, so the two has to be here. That fixes that two. That's nice. Um, what else have we got? Six, two, five, seven, one in this column now has to be here. That gets rid of that one possibility. Interesting up here. Um, three or eight both have to be up here somewhere. And that's interesting. Right. I've, I've, the reason I've put three or eight in there is in column two, this cell is ruled out from being three and eight. And the fact that there's a three and an eight there means that these can't be three. So in column one, the cells that now can't be three are all of those. So that's a three. And that fixes this one, which fixes the one in the bottom row. I have a feeling we're going to finish off all the ones now. You know, that is a one. That's the last place left in the top. They're not ones. Those can still be. So in rows three and four, but those can't be a one in row three. Nor can that, nor can those. Yeah, the one in row three is there. Um, and the one in row four must be in the first column. So that's all the ones placed. Well, I mean, this is a really interesting puzzle, the way it all feeds on itself. Nine in column four must be in one of those two. Don't know which one yet. That. Has to be nine or four. Oh, look, twos. Twos in columns one, two, and three are ruling out those three cells. So those have to be a two-five pair there. 
Um, these are 6, 4, and 9. One of those is a 6, that's a 6, so that's a 6, and then we've got a 4, 9 pair. 3s in column 3 are ruled out of all of those, so 3 goes in there. That stops that being a 3. 6, 7, 5, 9 could be there or there, and the other 3 are 8 and 4 in some order, but I don't know what order. Wow, 2, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, that could be 4 or 8. Um, gosh, I mean, the way, the way you have to ask yourself questions about these is really, really confusing to me. Ah, oh, that three actually has ruled out that three. So the three in this box now has to be here. Three, seven, two, one, five. Don't know much about the other items in the box, but we're nearly done on threes. Three in column six has to be there. Three in column five here, surely. Yes, that makes that the three. And we're done with threes as well. So now I think we may have done all of one, two, three, five, and seven. So we're just left with those items that we've got only one given of, nines, eights, and sixes, and fours, where we got no givens. Oh no, look, we haven't finished with twos and fives. Can we finish with twos and fives? Where's a two in this column? Not here or here, not in this box, so it must be here. So that does resolve the five, two. Where's the last five gonna go? It, in this cell, not quite the last one, there's one in the central box. Okay, so six in the central row has got to be here, can't be here because of that six, can't be here because there is a six up there. So that's a six. This is a four eight pair in some order. That's also a four eight pair. Now we've got a six and a nine in those two, that must be the nine. That's six, that is now no longer a nine and is either a four or eight. Who come on now, I like this bit. We're almost finishing off. Um, four, eight, six here, but don't know much about the order. Ah, six in this box. Can't be here because of that one and that six has ruled out two more. So six is there. One of those is a six. Six, six, one of those three. I mean, these are six, four, and nine in some order. Um, and it's fascinating that it's still not collapsing. One of these two, I think, must be a six, must be this one. We have to get three sixes in the top three rows. One there, one there. And the only other place that's not sitting above a six is there. So that helps us actually fix the sixes. And I think that we, I mean, we might be done with sixes now. There's one just to fix down there. Okay, so fours, eights, and nines to go. Um, and we've got to use the nines that we've got surely next. Nine there, nine there. One of these two is a nine. Um, this is a four eight pair down here. Ah, and that is interesting because now we've got two cells in this row that are four or eight, so that must be nine. So let's keep marking four eight pairs where they appear. Um, So this isn't nine, this isn't nine. The nine in the bottom row is here. That's another four, eight possibility. That must be nine now. That's not nine anymore. Not sure whether it's there or there in row three. Um, and again, you're still being tempted by possibilities 
that would look normally possible, but in this puzzle aren't necessarily. So that is another 4-8 possibility. Um, up here, I can't see why any of those wouldn't be 4-8-9. So these are all the, now I've got all the possibles marked. Um, so of the th remaining four nines, ah, no, one nine there, one nine there, one here, and that leaves one for this box. Don't know which way round they would be. How can we resolve this final part? Could do a uniqueness thing and assume that because that's not four nine, that can't be four nine, and that will be right. That will mean that this cell is eight. But I'm, it would be nice to be able to prove that. Oh, look, of course, in the top row, we've got a pair of four nines. Neither of those can be eight. For for what reason? Why can't this one be eight? Oh, maybe it can. Maybe it can. Maybe I've just been lax in assuming it couldn't be. No, no, I haven't. There has to be an 8 in one of those two in this column, because this can't be 8 because of that 8. And because there's an 8 in one of those two, and this is a box, then this can't be 8. So this must be 8. Right, that did work. Wow, I mean, this is just a difficult puzzle. And that hasn't, you know, I thought that would crack it wide open, and I'm afraid it hasn't for me. Sorry if you're seeing how to finish this off clearly. While I'm not, that's quite possible. Um, this is so weird. If this, maybe I need to do some a logic chain. Surely not at this stage. Oh, look, yes, column one. That's four nine, that's four nine, so that's the eight. Okay, so now we can start disambiguating all the fours and eights. Thank God. It's taken a while. What a puzzle. I mean, this has been very entertaining, I have to say. Thank you very much to, for recommending it to us. Um, that can't be a 4 because there's a 4 below it, so it's a 9, that's 8, that's 4, that resolves this 9-4 pair, then that resolves the 9-4 pair in this box, and that finishes off the puzzle there. What a ridiculously difficult puzzle. <laughs> what a really clever setup. I mean, who came up with that idea that that might work? impressive. Um, I hope that was of some value to you. It's a very interesting puzzle. Um, I've never known deficit region be quite so interesting. Normally it's on a smaller grid in a 7x7 seven seven or an 8x8, eight eight, but uh, that really was tricky. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope to uh, see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.